Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I was doing a little uh, prayer video for this month. It's kind of late uh, and an update uh, okay, for the, how things are going on around here. Uh, I'm looking out right now. We've had a beautiful day, but we've had nothing but rain all through, uh, was it uh, November, October, November, December, and the early part of January. We just had some sun for a couple days. And uh, we've had a lot of wind storms, a couple thunderstorms. Um, and power's gone out uh, several times. But uh, let's get to the prayer requests. I always like to start with this because I want to remind the brethren that the King James Bible is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. And one of the biggest things we're supposed to be practicing works, how we live our life for Jesus Christ, is prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Brothers says, Christ, make sure you're praying every day and you're talking to the Lord about everything and anything. Okay, uh, one of the big things is talking to the Lord about your faults, your failings, ask Him for help. Okay, uh, your necessities, you know, what you need, not wants, need. You can pray sometimes, God, I'd like to have this, it's a want. But the main thing you need to be praying for, Brother Sister Christ, is necessity, food and raiment. Especially as the days go by, we see what's going on out there. Um, but we're supposed to pray without ceasing. How is your prayer life, brothers and sisters Christ? That's the whole point of doing these prayer request videos once a month. And um, is to get you, to remind you, brothers and sisters Christ, to keep praying. Keep praying. Your prayers are not in vain. Okay? Pray for the brethren. And okay? we'll get into that in some of these other verses. But Philippians 4, 6. In the King James Bibles, Philippians 4, 6, we read, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgivings, let your requests be made known unto God. Requests. Sometimes I don't point that out, but it says request. Not your wants, not your demands, but your requests. You request, Lord, please watch over me. Please provide food and raiment for me, Lord. Please help me get through this winter, Lord. Okay. Whatever your prayer request is. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Do you know prayer and reading the Bible and studying the Bible go hand in hand? Some people like to separate, and they're two separate things, but honestly, they go hand in hand. When you read, you need to be reading the Word of God every day. You need to be studying it, doing a, a good thorough study once or twice a week. Okay, You need to be in this book all the time. But in order for this book to be effective, you need to be in prayer all the time. Are you praying? Lord, open the scriptures to me. Lord, show me the truth. Lord, there's a division in the body of Christ. What's the truth? People are fighting over things. Lord, show me the truth. This is our foundation. Okay. Lately in the body of Christ, it just seems like Satan's really infiltrating the body of Christ with fakes and frauds. And he's taking people who are truly saved and tearing them down and using them against the body of Christ to cause division. Why? Because this isn't the final authority and how's their prayer life? Some of them are starting to, starting to do this, but they're not doing the prayer. They're not praying as often. Oh, I don't need to pray as much. I know the Bible. You need to be praying all the time. It goes hand in hand, Brother Sister Christ. Ask God to open this book to you and he will. Okay. Remember, it's God's wisdom you're seeking, not man's wisdom, not the wisdom of this world. When you start going off man's wisdom, traditions of men and church fathers and stuff like that, this seems to go bye-bye. Your prayer life seems to dumb down. But I'll tell you this, the number one thing that gets in the way of a prayer life for brothers and sisters in Christ, the number one thing is two things. I'll say worldliness, which kind of goes hand in hand with sins of the flesh. The two fights that are battles that are going on is battle against the wicked world, the enemy, Satan, and his ministers that, are tra that transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We're fighting the world, and we have a battle with the flesh. And either one of these things can get in the way of your prayer life and kill your prayer life, where you don't talk to God that much anymore. With the flesh, you know the number one reason why it kills your prayer life? Because if you talk to God, and you pray as much as you did before, and you read this Bible as much as you did before, you'll be convicted about letting the flesh have its way. You'll be convicted about that sin that you just got back into. You chose to get back into. 
and your body tells you, oh, you don't need to pray. Oh, you don't, don't, don't you, can, you can read the Bible tomorrow. Oh, you can do a little prayer tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Okay? You need to be doing it today. But your flesh, when you get into sin and wickedness, it tries to tell you not you, you don't want to do it because your conscience goes, you need to do this because you need to get convicted. You need to get that sin out of your life. You're starting to go the way of the world. You need that prayer. You need that Bible study to be convicted so you don't start be, uh, being conformed to the world. Now what the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love not the world. Are things in this world, you're starting to love them more than you love the Lord and His Word. I know some men in ministry that the world is more important than the ministry. The world's more important than their love for the brethren. The, the world's more important than their love for the Lord and His Word. Have you, have you forgotten that we're supposed to be fighting the world? Love not the world. There's nothing in this world that's worth coming between your prayer life and your Bible study reading life, taking God's Word, hiding it in your heart, and living it. Nothing in this world is more important than that. Wrong in the brethren. I know brethren in ministry that have sacrificed brethren on the altar of the world. When they're supposed to be sacrificing the world on the altar for Jesus Christ. But they're sacrificing brethren. They're sacrificing their ministry. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you're sacrificing your walk so you can have the world. Be very careful. Okay? Be very, very careful. John 17, 15 wraps this one up, what I'm saying. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Separation. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're supposed to be standing apart from the world and being a light to this world. And I'm, the point I was making is when you start getting back into the world, you start getting back into the flesh, the two battles, if you stop fighting, what happens? It'll affect your prayer life. It'll affect your Bible reading life. Because like I said, they go hand in hand. When your prayer life gets affected, this gets affected. When your walk with the Lord starts failing, there's men in ministry that should, should be stepping down and taking a break to get their heart right with the Lord. Why? Because they're, this part's failing. And why is this failing? Because their prayer life's failing. Their walk with the Lord is failing. They're becoming worldly. They're forgetting the two battles that are supposed to be going on. Amen. Romans 1 9 we read, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Once again, brothers and Christ, do you take time to mention the brethren in your prayers? Do you pray for the brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you pray for uh, the enemy, which is a lost world, that God will open their eyes and give them every opportunity to get saved? But for your brethren, mainly for your brethren, do you pray? I pray for Brother Brian Denlinger every day almost. He's always on my heart. I pray for him all the time. He acts like he's an enemy, and right now he's starting to become an enemy. Okay, but I pray for him all the time. He's lost his way. Right? And it's not just him. There's other brethren that I love and called brother and sister in Christ that have turned on me. I pray for him. Okay, there's brethren that, that I still have fellowship with that they have prayer requests. They talk to me about their life and what's going on in their life. I've got brethren overseas. I pray for them. Do you pray for them, brother, sister in Christ? Paul was always praying for the brethren. He ceased not to warn the brethren night and day with tears when it came to the, to the fight with the world. False converts trying to come in and mess everything up. He, about the flesh. How brethren were given into the flesh and the flesh was messing them up. He warns, he's not to warn night and day with tears. He's always prayed for the brethren. Are you taking time out to pray for the brethren? Pray for me. I make mistakes. I have struggles. Okay, I, I have that war. We all have that war with the world and with our flesh. Are you praying for the brethren? And Romans 10, 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. Every once in a while, are you throwing Israel in your prayers? God's chosen people. Old Testament, God's chosen people. Today, it's the body of Christ. Are you praying that the Jews, what Jews will get saved can get saved today? Are you praying for the peace of Jerusalem? It probably won't happen. Right now, Jerusalem is a very wicked place. Very, very wicked. A lot of bad things going on over there. Catholicism has their grip in everything. America, it has its grip in 
a Jerusalem, owns over half of Jerusalem, right? But are we praying for Jerusalem, the people, that they turn back to God, repent, and turn back to God, get saved, believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, their, God, their king. Okay? Make sure you're throwing them in your prayers every once in a while. Okay? One of my big prayer requests was always for my knees. Um, but my knees have been doing better. Uh, it seems with me when I gain weight during the winter, because I don't get to get out, because like I said, it's been raining nonstop all winter. And I'm going to do a walk around the property to show you some things. But uh, it seems when I gain weight when my knees hurt. And when I lose the weight during the summer, doing a lot of physical work, getting to walk on the beach, do work around the property, uh, I tend to lose the weight and the knees don't hurt so much. So I remember that being one of my prayer requests, but God has really answered it and helped me by trying to keep my weight down. Right? Uh, one of the things about Victoria getting old, I was always doing a prayer request for Victoria, but an update is, is she's doing great. She's still getting slower and slower, not wanting to do as much because she's getting old. But we might have a new addition to our family here. And uh, i got to wait. I'll be picking uh, a new dog up. Um, I'll try to do a quick, uh, like a small quick video just to introduce him. But um, i got to pick up a new dog here uh, probably in a few days. So we'll have a, a new addition to the family. Uh, a dog needed a home, and it was a Schnauzer mixed with uh, another breed, but it predominantly looks like a Schnauzer dog. And it looks like Victoria only needs gray instead of black. So we're going to have a new dog. So pray for me on that, that that works out, that dog likes it here, you know, because it's, it's not a pup. When dogs aren't a pup, when you raise a dog from a pup, they really cling to you and they make this their home and it works out great. But when you take in a dog that's already like three to five years old, um, it's a little bit challenging. I know some of you know what I'm talking about, Brother Jesus Christ. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So that's what's going on there. Uh, one of my, like I said, the two battles that are going on, Brother Jesus Christ, the biggest prayer request is the two battles. Starting with the flesh, God keeping me on the straight and narrow, God keeping you on the straight and narrow with the life we're living when it comes to our flesh. Romans 8, 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk af not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit. It's going to open the Bible. This is what defines our life. This is our foundation. Not this. Not our flesh. Okay. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You ever notice when you do that, when you start backpedaling and you give in to temptation, you start choosing to sin, your mind is all focused on that flesh, that sin, that wickedness. It becomes a temptation, it becomes, I mean, it becomes an addiction. And you have a hard time getting it out. You let it back in. It's so easy to let things in, it's hard to get them back out. Okay. Mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things that are the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Your flesh is always going to try to become between you and the Lord. It's going to try to put a wall between you and the world. Lord. The world's going to do the same thing. It's the whole point of the world and the flesh. The battle that we're fighting is so we can keep that walk with the Lord. The walk on the straight and narrow. Good. Okay. But those things try to come in and be roadblocks to stop us, to try to get us to go to the right, to get us to go to the left. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You know what Satan's ultimate go is? To make you uh, stink before God. You're not pleasing to God anymore. You're all fleshly. You're all worldly. You don't please God anymore. You're starting to stink. Brothers and sisters in Christ, my prayer for the brethren is that you work hard on keeping this in check. The flesh, not the heart. I always point at the heart on accident. But I'm talking about the flesh. Make sure your heart's right with the Lord. But the flesh, you need to keep this in check. You need to keep the flesh down. It's one of my big prayers for the brethren. For myself, pray for me for that. Pray for the brethren for that. Uh, one of the things is praying that we don't get distracted by this wicked world. I know a lot of brethren are getting distracted by what's going on out there. Totally getting distracted. Brothers says Christ, we need to keep praying for one another. I know some of you said, well, you've asked for this prayer. We still desperately need this prayer request. This world is distracting some of the people. Some of the people have turned, some of the brethren have turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ. They're no longer looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. And it's showing in the life that they live. 
Everything that they kept putting down, the flesh they kept putting down, they kept fighting the world, that they relaxed. Well, Jesus isn't coming back tomorrow. I could relax. I can take my time. I know a brother that had pride problems, always kept his pride in check, and then he turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, and his pride went through the roof. What? Why does that go hand in hand? Because he's not looking for that blessed hope. He's not looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day now with the life that he's living. He's relaxed. He's let his guard down. And a lot of us have done that. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and not get distracted by this world. This world is all, this world's number one job is to take your eyes off Jesus Christ with the life that you're living. That's as simple as I can get it. It's to take your eyes off Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4, 15 says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. The world is going downhill. The world is always contrary to the Lord. The world's way is contrary to God's way. And there are brethren that are starting to do things their way. They think it's their way, but it's the world's way. And they're trying to pervert the scriptures and say, no, 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 it's not the world's way, it's God's way. No, it isn't. Chapter and verse. Their way is not God's way. They're starting to give in to the world and be distracted by the world. There's some people that are trying to fight the world, expecting to get the world to change, and the world is not going to change. You know who's going to fix this world someday? A lot of you already knew the answer and probably said it before I said it. Jesus Christ. When he comes back to rule and reign for a thousand years, he's going to set this world right. Only he can do it. Brothers and sisters, all we can do is make sure our own life, our walk with the Lord is right. We can encourage the brothers and sisters of Christ like I'm trying to do in this video. Trying to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ to walk with the Lord and to live right. But we can't fix this world. Only Jesus Christ can. We cannot make this world right. Line up with the Lord and His Word. Only Jesus Christ can, and He's going to do it someday. But some of us are getting distracted by the world. Okay, we're getting so in, in, into what's going on out there. And like we can fight it and we can change it. No, we can't. 2 Timothy 2 4 says, No man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, the, the he hath, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You're supposed to be fighting the good fight, and the fight we're fighting is spiritual. We're fighting the flesh, and we're fighting the world. Okay, sometimes it can become physical. You might end up having to die for this book someday. God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. You might have to die for Jesus Christ someday, physically. But we're not supposed to be going out there warring physically with the world, trying to force the world to line up with this book. If they're lost, they're lost. Their punishment's going to be hell. They refuse to get saved. They refuse to repent. Having godly sorrow for their personal sins. We've done studies on this. Remember King David. Why was King David a man after God's own heart? Because when he failed the Lord, his heart, he had godly sorrow towards God for his personal sins. He, that's what set him apart from Saul, King Saul. King Saul had pride. He had ego. Okay? He had envy. He always tried to justify his sins. Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have done it. But he turned around and tried to justify it. There was no sorrow in his heart towards God for what he did. With King David, we read in the Psalms how there was much sorrow in his heart when he failed the Lord. When he sinned against God. It ripped him apart when he didn't do things God's way. They refused to repent. True biblical repentance. Their punishment's hell. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into a ditch. Don't get distracted by this world, brothers and Christ. That's one of my prayer requests. I pray that you guys are praying this. All right. One of the biggest things I also pray for is patience among the body of Christ. Some of us are getting very impatient. We're trying to push things. I'm the best, worst example of not being patient. Okay. I failed the Lord so many times, I failed the brethren so many times because I got impatient and I wasn't patient. Psalms 37, 7, we read, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Sometimes we try to push things and do things what we want to do or things that we think is right. 
be patient. Wait on the Lord. God will open doors. God will close doors. Okay. It's a whole other study, but the, God is opening doors to some brethren, and they're slamming it in his face. God is closing doors to some brethren, and they're taking a battering ram trying to beat the door down. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Don't get distracted. Once again, don't get distracted by the world. Oh, this man over here is prospering, or that man over there. Focus on you and the Lord. Because of the, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Right? He prospers, and he's doing wicked things, and it looks like he's getting away with it. He's not getting away with it. Like I said, the blink of an eye that, that, that is now versus all eternity. They think this blink of an eye right now, they're getting away with it. What about all eternity? Everyone has an eternal soul, and you're going to spend an eternity somewhere. You can spend an eternity with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or you can spend an eternity with your lowercase g God, Satan. Where's Satan going to end up? The lake of fire. For all eternity. Romans 2.6 says, who will, who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patience, continuance, and well-doing, seeking for glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life. It's patience. Living a life of Christ takes a lot of patience. And God will give it to you if you let Him. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. And He'll help you with patience. Just being patient. Not jumping the gun. Not getting upset. This person... How many times do you hear people drama fest, drama fest online where they're just arguing and complaining about somebody else? I'm not talking about teaching truth versus error. We can preach truth versus error. But I'm just talking about getting into stuff like they have so many subscribers whining and complaining about how many subscribers someone else has. Okay, or uh, how many views someone has on YouTube, or the way what how a person eats, you know, and so it just you start whining about people and, and getting distracted by people. Don't stick to this. Stand for this. The Word of God. That's all you need to do. Verse eight. Don't get into all the drama fests where people are just you know mocking one another, name calling, backbiting, and whispering, bearing false witness. Don't get into that stuff. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Notice how your patience disappear when you give in to the flesh or the world. Your peace and joy disappear. Nine, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that work, that man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace. Peace. To every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Living a life of Christ is not always easy. It's hard work sometimes. And you've got to put up with a lot from the world and your flesh. But God will always give you peace when you're doing your best to stay on the straight and narrow. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. Right? He'll help you be patient. Verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God. You think they're getting away? No, there's no respect of persons with God. He, he's better than you, therefore he, he can do worldliness and sin and everything. God will overlook his because God loves him more than he loves you. God's not a respecter of persons. They're earning wages, the lost world. Remember, the wages of sin is death. They're earning wages. But we have the gift of God, which is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We're earning rewards in heaven. They're earning wages. Hell and the lake of fire. Don't, you know, be patient. Don't let people push you into jumping the gun. Romans 12.10 Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. We'll be doing a study here recently about Paul's attitude about who he wanted to fellowship with and face-to-face -face fellowship with. Not this online garbage that's going on. Oh, I have fellowship online and that's all I need. I'm telling you, but that's what's hurting the brother body of Christ. Preferring one another. Paul preferred face-to-face -face fellowship face-to-face -face correction, face-to-face -face rebuke. Okay. He wanted to see, be with the brethren face-to-face, -face, physically there. He wrote lots of letters, but he wanted to be there. Preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, and here it is, patient in tribulation. One of the things that causes us to lose our patience is when we're going through hard times. 
We're supposed to trust the Lord. God's got our back. He's watching over us. But we start to lose our patience and we start making decisions and jumping the gun based off of what's going on around us. And we're not patient. We're not trusting the Lord. Continuing instant in prayer. Like I said, one of the things that help hinder you is when you stop praying. Your flesh starts to get the better of you when you stop praying and stop reading this book. Stop studying this book and applying it to your heart and living it. Your flesh starts getting the better of you. The world starts getting the better of you. 13. Distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Everything about you starts falling apart when you stop praying and reading this book and studying this book and applying it to your life. When this world becomes more important. Living your dream life becomes more important. That addiction that you allowed back in your life is more important. The flesh. The world's way. Some things of the world's more important. Pleasing the world. Pleasing people. Family members. Friends. Neighbors. That becomes more important than pleasing God. It'll start messing you up. Brothers, says Christ, I pray for peace and patience among the body of Christ in these last days. Focus on your walk with the Lord. God will take care of the rest. God's dealing with this world. God will take care of this world. Focus on your walk with the Lord. Focus on how you're treating the brethren. Focus on how you're treating the lost world when it comes to preaching the gospel to them. Are you preaching truth to them? The gospel. Jesus Christ. Are you getting mad at them and putting them down and, and setting a bad example, calling them names, mocking, sarcasm? Are you setting a bad example to the lost world, for Jesus Christ to the lost world? That light isn't really shining as bright because you're acting like the lost world. No. How are you treating the lost world? How are you treating your brothers and sisters in Christ? These are very important. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my big prayer requests that brethren get back to looking for that blessed hope okay get back to your walk with the Lord get back to true fellowship with the brethren okay? uh, and don't get distracted by this world and with true fellowship with the brethren it helps we help one another to keep the flesh down we hold each one each other accountable to this iron sharp as iron sharpeneth iron so does the countenance of one man sharpen the countenance of another okay um, one of the things, of issues I have with online fellowship is no one sees what you're doing. No one sees how you're really living your life online. And people are loving that. They love the online fellowship because no one can actually see how I'm living. How are you living, brothers and sisters of Christ? What is, it, what is it you're hiding from the brethren? What sins of the flesh are you hiding from the brethren? What compromises have you compromised when it comes to the world? Are you hiding from people online because no one can actually see you? Like I said, I don't want to get into the other study because I'm going to be doing the other study. But, you know, the one reason people like isolation, even from the body of Christ, the reason they love their isolation is because they're hiding. They don't want that conviction from a brother or sister in Christ saying, hey, I see what you're doing. They like to hide. Okay? We need that true fellowship among the body of Christ. So our next part of this video, that's my prayer request. I'm praying for you, brother, sister Christ. Please pray for me. So... We're going to get into the next part of this video. I'm going to walk around the property and show you some of the things that I've been having to deal with in the last few months. Uh, trees falling down, uh, the chicken coop, um, and just some stuff on the property. So, brothers and sisters Christ, if anything, take this away. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Okay? We need to get back to do... I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself with that study, but we need to get back to house churches. There was a brother in Christ that, that God called him into house churches and he forsook house church for the world. The world came a knocking and he answered. The flesh came a knocking and he answered. And he, God could have really used him to help push the house church movement and he failed the Lord and he failed the brethren because he chose the world. And we desperately, desperately need house churches. We need brethren coming together physically face to face for true fellowship worshiping the Lord, listening to the Bible being read, we're getting so dependent on the internet. And people like being internet, what I call internet Christians. I can be a Christian online and put on a good show, but how is my actual physical life, my physical walk with the Lord? Does it line up? I'm telling you, 50% of the time it doesn't. A lot of people are putting on shows online. 
They, they just like the online because then I can be the person I want to be when I'm online, but I'm not that person in real life. So we're going to get to the property. Please pre keep prayer, Brother Jesus Christ. Keep praying, praying, praying. Don't stop praying for the brethren. Don't stop praying for yourself and your walk with the Lord. Your failings, your faults, and, and the things you're doing right. Pray, 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 Brother Jesus Christ. Please keep praying. So I'm going to end this part of the segment, and then we're going to go to the walk with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you. People say you're getting arrogant. and get My love for you. I'm telling you this out of love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. He also said, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. My love for you, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, capital W word, and lowercase w word. That's where my love for you is. So I'll see you in the walk. Uh, we're going to start on this deck, and we're going to move down. Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Here we're getting back to the walking. I wanted to start it out with the view today. Today was, yesterday was a little bit more clear skies. Today we got partly clouds, so the, the rains might be coming back. So this is our little gap to get some work done outside. Um, I've cleaned this up a lot, but I don't know if you can see all the leaves. But the wind, this, this is a wall, an L-shaped wall to block the wind. And this place was just, everything was tossed about. We had the strongest winds this year. He's not looking too good. I'm trying to bring him back to life. Um, we had the strongest winds, and I had I just brought that back out, listening to my uh, wordless music. And it's also got a plug-in that I can listen to Alexander Scorvey. Plug in a uh, USB. Um, just doing a little quick walk around. This might like look too healthy, but this is how it looks during the winter. Everything, certain plants will die. The leaf part of the plant will die, but not the root. I don't know if I can point it out, but here we go. There's some, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a fish in there still. But you can see this stuff that's turning gray, these little leaves. There's a little center spot right here that stays alive. And you can see roots. I don't know if you can. I'll pull it up a little bit. You can see those root systems right there. The leaf will die. And as the leaf's dying, it all looks ugly. And I'm supposed to try to pull out these leaves as best I can. But today, this time, there was just so many. Uh, there he is. There's the fish. But this will get back to being beautiful come spring. Both my ponds that I built here, and then I've got a pond in the backyard that will go back to looking beautiful. But uh, this got trashed. It broke. It fell down. It got so windy that I forgot to take it down. I lost uh, a hummingbird feeder that was in the family for, for at least two to three generations. And it was an old, big glass one. And uh, it fell down because it got so windy. Now you look at these trees. Uh, a lot of these trees back there, which we'll get to later, they already fell down, praise the Lord. But nothing fell down around the house to the to a point of being endangering the house, praise the Lord. Uh, you see the tree right there is broken. Just a trunk. Uh, I did have a tree right here fall. You can see it right there in the picture and the video. This tree fell down. I had to cut it up, and I might still do some more cutting up, but it's not a priority yet. I did what I had to to get the priority. I had my nice trees right here that I love, especially this one that looks... It's a uh, Japanese maple. You get beautiful red leaves, dark red leaves on here. And it's beautiful, and the tree fell right on all this, like it was going to destroy this. And I had to cut it up. But all over the neighborhood, you have trees falling down. You see some trees falling down right there. But the wind, when a tree dies or the tree's on the verge of death, like he's just so weak, uh, the root system's dying, um, the wind will blow so hard and knock these trees down. And then these trees will, uh, you know, go into the ground like they're supposed to. And they'll become mulch. But that's what we put up with every winter around here. So I'm going to walk down here. We had a whole row of dead trees up here. And I had to, this tree fell, and it blocked this whole path. This is my path down to my cistern, my well, where I get water. And uh, I had to trim this up. But I haven't walked this path yet since this winter. Um, so we're going to walk as far as we can. And then I'll stop the video, and we'll start back up at top again. And we'll take a look at what the storm and stuff did to the chicken coop. So I thank you, my brothers and sisters Christ, for your prayer. 
uh, in people's day-to-day -day lives, mine, uh, especially for the chicken coop. I'm down to, getting ahead of myself, but down to four chickens. So like I said, I'm sorry about the bouncing. Part of it's because this is downhill. The other part is because I'm working harder on learning how to hold still and not shake so much when trying to hold something. But so far, I cleared this out this last summer, and it looks still good and clear. But you'll see spots we come across from previous winters where the, some tree fell down and I cut it because it blocked the path. Um, but we need to... Ooh, here's one. It's starting to grow in down here. So it goes from being a good path to getting smaller because I need to get down here and work this path this spring. Ugh, ugh. Sorry, spikes. Getting grabbed by spiky um, salmonberry bushes. But here's this tree that fell. A limb off of it. I think it fell off those trees there. And it came down just a limb. That'll be easy to take care of. But as you can see, that's what I mean by when trees fall, they just turn to mulch. And it's good for the ground. Especially on this hillside, it's good for the ground. But uh, right now the deer are keeping a path here for me. <laughs> it's like considered a deer trail now. And speaking of deer, that's called deer poop. So this is a deer path now. And the path is really getting overgrown. There's a lot of thorns. I don't know if I want to walk through it just yet. But down there, when I walked the steep path, I was trying to walk the easy path. But I have a secondary path that's steep all the way down here. And there were some trees that fell down. There's a big log right there that looks new that fell from one of these trees. But the wind picks up so much sometimes on this hillside. We'll make our way back up. But... It falls down, there's one right there that kind of fell. These are all small ones, thank goodness. I've had some huge trees fall over this path before where I'm sitting down here with a chainsaw and a regular handsaw taking care of it to get it out of this path. But this is far from the house, which is such a blessing. So when trees fall down here, it's work. But working with your hands is a good thing. Working with your hands is a good thing. Okay. So I'll go ahead and take us back up top. Okay, brothers, just Christ, we're back on top. Like I said, there's been some broken trees there that fell down. That's why this whole area over here looks kind of open. Um, but we're on to the chickens. This back here becomes a wind tunnel. And I'm down to, and there they walk away. I'm down to five egg-laying hens. I once had ten. I'm down to five. And a rooster. I don't have any worms for them, but I do throw worms to them every once in a while to train them to come when I want them to come. But, uh, this was kind of stupid, but I did this to the gate because I got so mad because I had a, um, bobcats and I had raccoons and maybe some, and sometimes skunks. They would hide there and the skunks would get my baby chickens, but the uh, raccoons and the bobcats would sit there and play with the ground right there where you see a hole. Because these holes weren't here, but now they got dug back here. Uh, they'd play with them and get the chicken to come over. And then they'd actually grab the chicken and yank him through this gate. Even though you think it's a small square. You look at these squares. You might think they're small. Uh, the chickens can get yanked right through there. Yanked right through there. So. And uh, these owls don't really do squat. <laughs> but I bought some to see if they'd keep some of the mice and some of the... Uh, you know, bad, bad animals away. Um, so we got a project that's going to get going on here. But the thing about the wind storms here is they cause this area here. Now that it's dried up, you can see. I'll get a little bit closer. Hello, guys. Hello. Burk, 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 burk. Burk, burk, burk. You can see some of the uh, wood chips that I had in here to help soak it up a little bit. But we had so much rain and so much wind that earlier a couple days ago this looked like nothing but pure mud you know from the chicken uh chicken poop and the wood and everything it just really destroyed a lot of this and you can see dirt and mud spackled everywhere uh the water thing fell off on them the wind they knocked it got scared probably jumped all over it and so my solution for this when it was raining was to put a bucket of water out here for them
But with this bucket of water, I have to keep replacing it every so often because they'll get their feet in there and it gets all muddy and junky. But because the sides, I'm thinking of putting some stuff on the sides, like this roof material on the sides, so it might help to re reduce the, the water that gets inside the chicken coop when it's windy and rainy. Might even do it on the front. That way it just makes this... I just want this to be a little bit more open and breathable. Not like just really enclosed. And we have the bottom part you see down there. That little door on the bottom. It's where all my baby chickens were. I had five baby chickens. And the moment they got big enough that I could in, introduce them with the big chickens. And I let them out to hang out with the big chickens. Uh, a skunk got them in the evening. Uh, so... We do have to fight predators out here. We have to fight, fight, fight predators. Like I said, I got this set up for us. Because it's going to be my project. I'll show a before and after. So before, this place looks pretty bad. M dirt. Like I said, it was mud before. And that mud, when it's mixed in with the, the chicken poop, it, it stunk to high heaven. You got it on you. You're like washing it off hardcore and everything. Okay. The garden, don't need much prayer for the garden because... It's winter time, and this is pretty much what the garden looks like during the winter. My peach tree right here still has some leaves. Some leaves have survived the whole winter, but most of the leaves have fallen. And then that's my uh, plum tree that's down. You probably don't hear it, but I hear a bird up there, a woodpecker, pecking at one of the old dead trees back there. But this is, this is what my garden looks like when it's not gardening season. You know, it just looks like a regular raised, flood, raised bed garden. But, uh... And there they are! Oh, wow, wow, wow. So blessed with so many. I cleared this out two days ago. Uh, so the, it's gotten warm. Like I said, it's just gotten warmed up in the last few days. And now they're trying to, they're starting to lay eggs like it's summer again, but we still have a couple months of winter. <laughs> I'll pick up these eggs later. But uh, I got to clean this out, brothers, this Christ. This is something that's a chore. I normally don't do this until springtime, but it was so bad this year that everything just looks really bad. And I'm going to try to fix their watering thing so I don't have to keep filling this up with water and get them back to uh, their... Uh, I have to redo the hay inside and everything. And right now they're a little fidgety because of all the rain, uh, the wind and everything. And they've been having to deal with predators towards the end of summer and all. Not this winter they haven't, but during the summer they had to put up with a lot of predators. A lot of predators. So Brothers is Christ, that's what I've been dealing with with the rain. Uh, trying to deal with the chicken coop in the rain. And watching out for the falling trees around the house. I don't know if you can see some of those small tree stumps. They're kind of blending in, but there used to be a huge dead tree right here that it slowly broke into pieces. And that one's kind of leaning. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, just an update of what I've had to deal with outside the house during the rain this year. Like I said, we've had power outages. Um, my truck, I think I'm going to have to get a new starter on it this summer. This winter, it's been hard starting when it gets really cold. And it's, it doesn't get below freezing here, even though it feels like it sometimes. So I can't. I don't think that truck would really start if we had below freezing weather here. So, like I said, the last couple days have been beautiful. And it's been a blessing. So, brother and sister Christ, I pray for you. Please pray for me. And uh, let's just keep fighting the good fight the really good fight, standing for God's word and encouraging, being an encouragement to the brothers and sisters in Christ, not being a hindrance, okay? Don't become like the world and start treating the brethren the way the lost world treats the brethren, okay? We're supposed to be treating each other differently. We're supposed to love one another. So I'll say it again, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.